El Gordo, the fat one, is an incredibly massive cluster of hundreds of galaxies. The amazing thing though, is all of the galaxies that we can see because of El Gordo. The cluster is so massive that it's causing some of the best gravitational lensing that we've ever seen. It got its name by being the most massive galaxy cluster to ever exist by the time the universe was 6.2 billion years old. And we're viewing it here as it was back then. It bends, warps, and magnifies light from distant objects, allowing us to see things that would otherwise be too faint to detect, and also twisting some of those images into incredible new shapes. In this video, we'll look at the most remarkable things that we can see in this image, plus other recent JWST images, including the most distant single star ever seen. I recently did a video about another great example of lensing, which also goes into a lot more detail about how and why all of this happens. So please check that one out if you want to know more of those details. But here, we're mostly just looking for the coolest and prettiest things in the image. The place to start has to be the fishhook galaxy, also known as El Anthuelo. It's got a beautiful red color due to the presence of lots of dust in this galaxy and due to cosmological redshift. The galaxy is so distant that the expansion of the universe is stretching the light emitted by this galaxy and making it look redder to us. This is all an infrared image taken by NERCAM on JWST and our eyes can't actually see infrared light but the colors we use in this image are somewhat correct in that redder objects correspond to longer wavelengths of light and bluer objects are shown in shorter wavelengths. The fish hook is being warped pretty extremely by El Gordo. We're seeing its shape vastly change from what it really is thanks to this lensing. What's cool is that by using models to unwarp the galaxy's light, we know that really the fish hook is a disc shaped galaxy that's about a quarter of the size of the Milky Way at 26,000 light years in diameter. If we compare this image to what Hubble saw, the improvement is amazing. It's like turning a dimmer switch up. This is true across the whole image and the brightness and detail increase with JWST, thanks to its enormous 6.5 meter mirror is incredible. Nearby, we have this wonderful splodge. Yes, that's a technical word. And really, this is the same galaxy being imaged twice. The lensing is extreme enough that we can see the light from this galaxy appear in the image twice, causing us to see an almost perfect mirrored image of the same galaxy. Then we have this bright white star here, which is actually in our own galaxy, and it's really just photobombing this image. Further to the left are some really deep red galaxies, again given their color by their distance and the presence of dust within them. I like this one in particular. It reminds me of Chi Yu, whom I adore. So that's a highlight for me. Another very obvious feature are a few of the very stretched out thin galaxies, but the most extreme example is right here. Nicknamed La Flaca, or the thin one, it's probably a totally regular galaxy, but the gravitational lensing here has conspired to stretch it out into this incredibly long and thin shape. Just down and to the left, we also have something particularly special. Within this galaxy here, the lensing has brightened and magnified it enough that we can see a single star within it. Normally, since these galaxies are so distant, we can't resolve single stars within them, like we can with galaxies that are closer to us. But in this one, we can see a single red star shining brightly named Koya, the Kachua term for star. It's very rare for telescopes to see a single star that's more than a billion light years from Earth like this one is, but this isn't even the most distant one ever seen. Previously, Hubble imaged one called Irondel, which is the current record holder for the most distant single star ever imaged. Stick around too, because recently JWST imaged that same star, and we'll take a look at that once we're done with El Gordo. We'll finish up with this image with a quick fire round, where I just show you all the other cool galaxies that I could find in this image. Like this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and all of these. The colors, the shapes, the interactions, and the lensing is all so cool. There is something great no matter where you zoom into this image. There are so many that I can't highlight them all individually. So please let me know your favorites and anything I've missed in the comments below. Also, this is what El Gordo looks like if we use an X-ray telescope to view it instead of an infrared one. In my opinion, it's probably not as cool to look at if we're honest. We can combine it with JWST's new image and get a gorgeous composite that shows all of those infrared galaxies. And we can see the superheated cloud of gas in blue that's giving off a lot of high energy x-rays. 
The shape of the cloud suggests that El Gordo is actually the result of two galaxy clusters merging together. And it's so cool to see this cosmic landscape in an image that spans so much of the electromagnetic spectrum. Let's now turn our attention to the JWST image that contains Irondel, the most distant single star ever imaged. It's a similar looking shot that contains a bright white Milky Way star, an enormous cluster of galaxies doing some amazing gravitational lensing, and then tons of awesome galaxies in the background. I'll leave it to you to pause or download the full resolution image to explore those galaxies fully, but I will just point out a few of my favorites. I just can't resist it. This spiral galaxy is beautiful, and there's a playful group up here that might be interacting. A nice side-on galaxy here with an impressive bulge. A few bright red things with diffraction spikes that might well be distant quasars. And so many other stunning objects nestled in this outrageous outlook. The star of the show though, pun intended, is right over here. This red arc, nicknamed the Sunrise Arc, is another example of a galaxy being stretched long and thin by powerful gravitational lensing. Within it though, this center bright spot is a single star named Irondel. It's been magnified at least 4,000 times its actual brightness by the intervening galaxy cluster, and it's being observed as it appeared a billion years after the Big Bang, making it at least 2 billion years older than Koya, the star we saw earlier in El Gordo. The bright spots either side of Irondel are two images of the same cluster of stars within the Sunrise Arc galaxy. Old massive stars like Irondel often have companion stars that form binary systems with them. And while we can't see one directly here, the colors that make up Irondel's light suggest that it might have a cooler, redder companion. They would be too close together to distinguish them here, but we have the first hints of a binary system now with JWST. Also, thanks to the power of JWST, we now know that Irondel is a massive star that's about twice as hot as our sun and a million times more luminous. Details we couldn't establish with smaller telescopes. Finally, I want to zoom out from these deep field, highly lensed images and show you one final nearby object that JWST has been imaging. This is the Ring Nebula. Here shown as a glowing green and purple eye-shaped cloud of dust and gas within the Milky Way. We've actually been shown three versions of this image now. An older green and purple image, plus newer official releases that show the ring nebula in infrared light here and mid-infrared light here. So let me know if you prefer green and purple or red and blue. The ring nebula is also known as M57, and it's a relatively close by 2,200 light years away. It's not to be confused with the previously imaged Southern Ring Nebula, although they are the same type of object, a planetary nebula. These badly named things have nothing to do with planets, but rather they're the remains of massive red giant stars throwing off layers of material at the end of their lives. We think our sun will produce one of these when it runs out of fuel in a few billion years, so the atoms in our bodies now could one day end up in something just as beautiful as this. The longer wavelength mid-infrared light highlights the dust and gas especially well, and we see gorgeous concentric shells on the outskirts of the nebula that are especially eye-catching here. In the center, we can see the star that's ejected all of the material to create the nebula. We can see stripes and wisps of gas and dust around here that make up a lot of the structure of the ring. And overall, the textures that JWST is imaging here are just amazing. It's actually easier to see the central star in the older Hubble version of this image. With JWST, we can see through the dust and gas much better, and the background is much fuller than the visible light image from Hubble. Overall, this is a great addition, but it also does make it slightly harder to find that central star right here. The gas blocks a lot more of the distant light here, and things look a lot flatter and plainer in the Hubble image. With JWST, we can see so much more texture. Everything is so much brighter, fuller, and more vibrant. Plus, we can see so many cool gas trails coming off the ring in the new image that just aren't visible in the older ones. I'd love it if you left me any thoughts or questions you have about any of these images we've talked about today in the comments below, and thanks for watching. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.